of course, four straight double-doubles. We'll see if he can keep it going this afternoon. And it, you ought to watch Randall, too. We know they're going to pound it down low, play physical down low. He's fouled out eight times in 24 games, so don't get Randall in foul trouble, yet still play aggressive. And for the homestanding Blue Jays of Creighton, they come in with a record of 17-5 and five overall, 11-3. and three. They'll go with Nick Porter, Johnny Mathis, and Josh Dopfler, the talented freshman at the guard spots. Dane Watts and Anthony Tolliver underneath. Tolliver, as Thad mentioned in the pregame show, almost with a triple-double last time against Evansville. Seven steals for the big guy inside. <laughs> Surprising from the 6'9 junior center out of Springfield, Missouri. 13 points, 12 boards, seven steals. He's had double digits and points 16 times this season. The Salukis have won the last five meetings between the two teams, including both games here at this brand new facility, the Quest Center. They're expecting a crowd of about 15-3 this afternoon. We'd like to remind you that allowing you to make a difference in the lives of underprivileged youth in Southern Illinois, First Cellular is collecting used cell phones to help fund Southern Illinois University's Saluki Kids Academy. Details about cell phone recycling online at firstcellular.com. We are moments from tip-off here this afternoon. Salukis are one game behind Creighton in Northern Iowa in the Missouri Valley Conference. They are tied with Wichita for third place. As teams go into action today, Wichita with a huge game at 3 o'clock today at Indiana State. We'll see if Indiana State can play the spoiler role as uh, the final four or five games of the season go along. There's Dana Altman. Dana Altman, what a career at Creighton. 235 and 125 for Dana Altman. His name is already being talked about as the replacement for Quinn Snyder at the University of Missouri. Well, they, they like to pick those coaches out of this Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, Bruce <laughs> Weber going to Illinois. Maybe the Indiana job opens up in a year or two. Uh, Chris Lowry's name's thrown around, but don't be surprised if Altman, he'll definitely get some looks, but he might be gone. Blue Jays in their white with blue trim. The Salukis in their road maroon with white and black trim. It'll be Randall Falker and Anthony Tolliver jumping center. We are underway. And Falker wins the opening tip. Johnny Mathis gets poked in the eye, and we're underway at the Quest Center. Tatum says he's feeling a lot better since that stomach flu that kept him out of Tuesday's game. Creighton starting in the man. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Jamal to Falker. Tony Young gets the rebound to go. That's nice followed by T.Y. That's Tolliver with the block. He's third in the Valley in blocks. Stripped out by Tony Young. <laughs> How about Tony on the offensive end sneaking in there to get the board and out underneath, working with the big 6'9 guy. Tolliver slaps it out. What a nice block by Tolliver on Falker going for the dunk. Dotzler, Porter misses. Rebound by Mullins. the wing it goes. Shaw can't handle. 15 on the shot clock. Tony Young loses it. Turnover Southern. Here's a transition bucket. I talked with Southern's coaching staff. They said they gave up too many transition buckets in the game back at the SIU arena. And we see right there, they had the open man. They passed up a three, but still worked a good pass down low. Southern definitely wants to keep an eye on the transition game. Foul called on Randall Falker, his first. First team foul, Dane Watts at the free throw line. Not the best free throw shooter. And there you see why. 22 out of 43 for the season. Just a 51 percenter coming into the game. If you're going to foul somebody, that's who you want to foul on this Creighton ball club. Second one looked a lot better from Watts. There's Chris Lowry, 44 and 15 in his second season with Southern. Tony Young gets away with a travel. So far, it's Creighton showing the defensive effort. Southern really yet to get into their defensive set, but Creighton putting a lot of ball pressure on. Usually they'll lay off the guards up front here. Let's see if they give Mullins a little bit of room. 
There's freshman on freshman. Now Dunsler's on Jamal Tatum. Ten on the shot clock. Baby hook. Tony Young fights for it, and they give it to the Salukis. Tony nearly with another rebound. He'll sneak in there, averages three boards per game, and they're going to need Tony down low, it looks like, this afternoon. The problem with him underneath is that means they could get hurt on transition back. How about the 94-foot pass and then Southern reset here? They get a new shot clock. Now they've gone zone, matchup zone. Randall with a nice move. Shaw for three. Yes. Matt Shaw stealing the open pass after it slips away. Matt with his 20th three-pointer on the season. Shoots about 38% from behind the arc. It's five to one early. Southern now is set up in their man-to-man -man defense. First time. Knocked away, and Creighton will keep it. Brian Mullins with quick hands. And that's Mullins, number 11 in the country in steals, 66 steals on the season. He's going to push his way up the record books. Darren Brooks' record may be in jeopardy if this guy keeps playing that way. Tolliver, no. Rebound to Jamal. Tatum, yes. That's just JT creating and getting some space. A nice little leaning jumper to the left. Seven to one early. Mathis. Oh, just a quick move on the crossover dribble. Got Tony cross-footed a little bit there. Ups and down. Porter. Traveling. Porter hesitated. He should have went up right away, allowed Tatum to sneak back in from behind. He saw the hand flash in front of his face. Porter didn't know what to do. Mathis on that last bucket. He's the leading scorer for Creighton. Almost 14 point, points per game. Tony Boyle into the lineup for Southern. Jimmy Motes in for the Blue Jays. Porter sits down, as does Randall Falker. Seen a lot of different looks here from Creighton so far. Now they'll go with the trap zone on a three-quarter court. It's mostly a trap of nuisance. Excuse me, that's that's Pierce Hibma into the game. Not Jimmy Motes. Mullins gets everybody to the lane. Shaw, no, rebound Tony Boyle, no. Big bodies going at it. Just ahead of a media timeout. Dulzler, nowhere to go. Tatum with the steal. You can hear this Blue Jay crowd not happy so far. But a good job by Southern defensively. Shaw with it up top. Down to Tony Boyle. Eight on the shot clock. Mullins into the lane. Turns it over. And a foul on Tony Boyle. As we come to our first timeout of the first half. 15.09 left to go in the first half. Southern seven, the Blue Jays three. Are you living with the peace of the past? The history detectives want to hear your story. Go to the address on your screen and don't miss the new season of History Detectives. Support for this program provided by The Furniture King. The 50,000 square foot showroom features home furnishings from Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and more. On Route 13, across from Houlihan's in Carbondale. 
Support for this program comes from Banterra Bank. When you come through these doors, you expect to see certain things. The pursuit of excellence, energy and hard work, exciting opportunities, and a team working together for a goal. At Banterra, we salute this team. Banterra is a locally owned and operated bank offering both consumer and commercial financial services. Banterra, a proud supporter of WSIU and Saluki Athletics. Welcome all the folks who are watching on DISH Network this year. WSIU is now on both DirecTV and DISH in many parts of Southern Illinois, Southeast Missouri, Western Kentucky, and Northwest Tennessee. Matt Beerman is our man on the sidelines. He's dressed in maroon, but there's not much maroon where he is. Matthew. We're having some problem with uh, Matt Beerman's microphone. We want to remind you, though, that Saluki basketball on WSIU is a very expensive venture. We want you to enjoy these games. Competing needs of station resources for other programs and other productions have never been more intense. Vote to keep the Salukis on the air by calling 1-800-745-9748 now with a generous pledge. There you saw Jamal Tatum's pull-up jump shot. It's 7-3 early, Salukis with the lead. Creighton with the basketball after Southern turned it over down low. And again, Tatum not looking too fatigued, but this is very early in this ball game. He said if the game was Thursday when they had practice back at the arena, there's no way he could have played. So we'll keep an eye on JT, see if he can go the full 40 minutes. Jimmy Motes is now in the basketball game. He inbounds the ball to Josh Dotson. Tolliver with it up top. Jump ball, it'll be Creighton basketball on the alternate possession. Jamal Wesley Clemens coming into the game for the Salukis. Jamal Tatum's gonna get a quick early rest. On that last play, Tolliver was trying to back in against Boyle, and I didn't see who it was for Southern. One of those guards, quick cutting, on, trying to keep up with their man, reached in and tapped the ball away. Dotzler way out high to Tolliver, and he will shoot the three from the top of the key. Well, he's hit five of his last eight from three. The guy stands six foot nine. Hibma to Motes. Holding on Tony Boyle. Southern Illinois foul, number 35, Tony Boyle. That's his second. His second foul already. Team's third, number 23, Jamal Foster. Here comes Jamal Foster. So they're going to rotate these big men in. Falker's out so far. They'll replace Boyle with Foster. Tolliver working on Jamal. That's the reason why, right there. They want to keep this guy in control. Nope. Tolliver just using his body, backing in. He's listed at 6'9", 245. Again, he's a junior out of Springfield, Missouri, but just having his way down low so far with Southern. Tony Boyle was called with the reach-around foul. Now he just backed in against Jamal Foster. Foster there it is. Their 6'10 guy backing in against Jamal. But Jamal gives up a, a little bit in the weight category. Tolliver's a decent free throw shooter as well as he hits it. It's now a 7-6 Saluki lead. Dominic Bishop is into the game. He played in the game at Carbondale. There's a foul reaching right around. And Dana Altman didn't like the foul call, but and there's no question Dominic Bishop reached right around. At Southern, he provided some instant defense, made a couple of steals in the backcourt. And it was Wesley Clemens for Southern in the game against Missouri State when he replaced Tatum. First start in your college career, 13 points. Mullins all the way. The Brian creating something down low. Jeffrey Day in for Tolliver. It's a great matchup, Mullins and Dotzler. Cuts off the baseline. Eleven on the shot clock. Hibma. No, rebound jo Jamal Foster. Foster <laughs> High off the up. glass. Yeah, his eyes at rim level on that one, Jay. Uh, Foster wasn't going to be denied. 
Wesley Clemens a bank shot. Clemens got bumped, but using his body, Wesley's 6'3 guy. Tipped away by Tony Young as they try to transition bucket for Jeffrey Day. Again, that's Southern, and it's Clemens that's making the shot in the lane, and then Creighton quickly with the ball out of bounds, going transition the other way, running the court. Nick Porter and Mathis are back in. Jamal Tatum's going to come in to give Brian Mullen a rest. And for Brian Mullen. Southern leads by five. Foul on Tony Young. That's another guy you don't want to get in foul trouble for Southern. You remember Young and Tatum were on the bench in the Creighton game back at the arena. Tony played 16 minutes. He led the team in points with 18, but he had four fouls in 16 minutes in that game against Creighton. It's five fouls against the Salukis now. Austin Brooks is in for Tony Young. Mathis. Well, they see the substitution with Brooks coming in. He's the walk-on senior, but he's played a lot of great minutes for Southern, but they went right over the top of Austin. Austin will bring it up against Goetzler. Key time in the game for Southern with... Dogs got lucky Tony on Young that one. And Mullins out of the game. Mullins doesn't rest much. Shaw fouled inside. Matt's looking to be aggressive in there tonight. A lot of wings from the Blue Jays reaching in on that one. Not a great entry pass to the post from Brooks, but hey, it works. Shaw with the good hands. Good job to collect the ball, and Blue Jays called with their fifth foul of the afternoon. Randall Falker back in. Matt Shaw sits down. Tolliver's coming in for Jimmy Motes. So Tolliver and Day, two 6'9 guys down there. Patrolling the blocks for Creighton. They've gone zone. Blue Jays are in a zone. 20 on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Down to Randall. Back out to Wesley. 4 3. Yes. <laughs> Wesley Clemens, 16 three pointer of the season, 32% from long range. Salukis lead by six. It's not always a great thing to lead this team at halftime. Creighton has come back in their last five out of six games to win at halftime. Down to Tolliver. Fouled by Foster again. And here's where Southern got to control Tolliver. Sometimes, yeah, you're not going to give him a dunk or an easy layup. But these three big men that they're going to rotate in, Falker, Foster, and Boyle, starting to pick up a few fouls. There's the foul. Foster had nothing to do except go all over Tolliver. It's already the sixth team foul on the Salukis. Creighton with just two. And Tolliver will shoot a couple. He's right at 70% on the season. He's got five. That looks like Creighton will go with the man pressure on the, you know, they're going to go with this full court trap again. Now they fall back as Clemens gets it. Good job by Southern breaking the press. Just ahead of a media timeout again. Creighton back in the man. Austin Brooks. Pushed out by Nick Porter, and a foul on Nick Porter. Yeah, we wasn't sure what they were going to call, but you could see by Porter's reaction, stomping on the court, the foul's on him. Southern will keep the ball. 11.43 left to go in the half. It's 14 to 10, Salukis from the Quest Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Support for this program comes from your area Anheuser-Busch distributors. Vinagoni Horrell Distributing, LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Vinagoni Distributing, reminding you that responsibility matters. Vogler Motor Company is proud to present its sales team. Vogler and their staff have been longtime Saluki supporters, a member of the Saluki Wheels Club, and proud once again the team of WSIU to bring you Saluki basketball. The players, coaches, and staff at Vogler's, which coach Lowry and his team another fantastic year. 
Support for this program comes from 710 Bookstore, offering officially licensed Saluki apparel, including jackets, polos, hats, t-shirts, and more. At the game, on the strip, or online at seventen.com. Cellular of Southern Illinois, a local company helping domestic violence victims and their families through the Call to Protect program. Details at your area First Cellular location or online at firstcellular.com. And join us Thursday, February 23rd for an important evening of programming about an issue of vital importance to the region, methamphetamine. At 8, Frontline examines the methamphetamine epidemic from a national scale. At 9, WSIU in focus, we'll have a panel of experts ranging from healthcare providers to law enforcement officials and prosecutors to offer advice on early detection of meth use, meth manufacturing resources available to help people addicted to methamphetamine and their families. And during the program, we'll have the phone lines open to provide information and resources to callers, as well as an avenue for you to ask questions to the studio panel. Be more informed about the meth epidemic. Tune in Thursday, February 23rd, starting at 8, here on WSIU Public Television. Wesley Clemens has a hot hand early for the Salukis with five points. One of them on a very nice three coming off a pick. And Southern so far shooting 60% from the field. You see they give a little bit of room and Wesley no problem going up. Southern 60% from the field, Creighton is 50%, but they've only put up six shots. Turnovers, Creighton with two, Southern with three. Salukis have the basketball after the foul on Nick Porter. Dotzler is back in. Brian Mullins is getting a great rest for the Salukis here. No reason for Creighton to come out on Foster. Jamal's got to go into the free throw area, at least, at least be a threat. Jamal with a good look and a bucket. Tatum Jamal two for Tatum. two on the night. Long pass, Wesley Clemens gets it. A great steal by Wesley Clemens. And also great awareness to know that he had Randall Falker down low as he was jumping out of bounds. Clemens with it, down to Jamal. Ooh, Tatum had a layup. Foster could have got him the ball. 15 on the shot clock. Bad pass. Dotzler is a little bit hurt. Steve Morris. Steve Morris blew the whistle, so Dotzer is going to have to come out of the game, I believe, if they stop play. Meanwhile, Mullins, Young, and Shaw back in for the Salukis. Here comes Creighton's trainer. And Dotzer got his feet tangled up with Tatum. And Dane Watts, <laughs> all three of them. So far, Southern controlling the boards. He looks OK, but he's got to come out. We talked about the big guys down low, and they put up a lot of those points, but six rebounds for Southern. Creighton has only one rebound in this game. Here's Hitler is going to come in for Dotzler. Dotzler is going to stretch his foot out on the baseline. Great basketball, 23 seconds on the shot clock. The Salukis have their starting lineup back in the game. And Mullins now will try to tame Johnny Mathis, who's so, so quick. Tolliver. Watts for three. Watts hits about 39%. Nothing but net on that one. It's as pretty a shot as you'll see. This crowd starting to get into it. Southern leads by three. Shot clock. Nice feed to Randall. Traveling. And he did. Parker shot the ball. He was going to look like he was has momentum going to his right. Wanted to switch around back to the left. Walked in the paint. Three point game. Nick. 
Porter with it. Watts again for three. Missed everything. Tony Young gets the steal. Watts thought he got fouled by Shaw. Still got a good release on it. Fouled by Jamal Tatum. His first. On number three, Jamal Tatum. That's his first. The team's seventh. Blue Jays into the bonus. Mathis is their, the their leading scorer. He's also their best free throw shooter. 81%. Southern has not been to the line yet. Creighton 4 4 5. Make it 5 6. Then Sue coming into the game for Porter. Again, Southern hasn't shot a free throw in their four Valley losses. Opponents have made 52 more free throws combined in those four losses. Short rebound to Falker. Then Sue hit some huge threes against Wichita State a couple of games ago here at the Quest Center. Hasn't scored much after that. In fact, it was almost an anomaly that he did what he did against Wichita State. Falker. Mullins to Shaw. A footer good. That's Brian's past first attitude. You maybe like to see him start to develop that shot from the free throw line, but he draws the defense in, kicks it off to Matt. Under nine minutes to go in the first half. Mullins with the steal and a foul on Mathis. <laughs> it was more like a handoff. And Mullins just quick hands. He gets his hands up from his hips right away as Mathis tries to go with the reach around pass, I guess you could call it, but Brian just quickness. So Southern with the ball and a four point lead. Tony Young loses it. Stolen by Shaw. And Falker can't handle. Gets it back to Tatum. Jamal with the left hand draws the foul on Dane Watts, and Jamal will go to the free throw line. But you saw what Watts had to do. He was trapped in the lane. He, won, he knew Matt Shaw was behind him. He stayed with him. And as JT came in, he goes up and gets called for the block. They, they must have put something on the ball here, Mike. Nobody can hang on to this thing for Southern. So Tatum will shoot two. Jamal, 79% free throw shooter on the year. Nope. Everything but in. Moats comes in for Watts. So almost 12 minutes into the basketball game, Southern attempting what will be their second free throw. Good. So Lukey's lead it by five, 19-14. Hibma working on Jamal Tatum. Nensu. Almost traveled with a basketball. <laughs> Tolliver's good. What a great post up. Falls on Tatum. They caught the rotation perfectly and drew the foul on Jamal Tatum. We've come to our under eight media timeout. The Salukis with a five point lead in Omaha trying to get that big road win. Support for this program provided by The Furniture King. The 50,000 square foot showroom features home furnishings from Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and more. On Route 13, across from Houlihan's in Carbondale. Support for this program comes from the Saluki Connection, a partnership between SIU Athletics Department and the 710 Bookstore, offering officially licensed Saluki apparel, including Saluki t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, and more. Located in Illinois Center Mall in Marion. I'm Maya, and my organization provides shoes for children. I'm John, and I'm a Habitat volunteer. I'm Kim, and I mentor kids. These are people you know, your neighbors, your friends, they're involved in your community. And I am a financial center manager for Old National Bank. And I'm a region president. And I'm an international banker. These are people you know, 
We are Old National. Old National Bank. Member FDIC. Support for this program comes from the SIU Alumni Association. SIU Alumni Association membership is open to alumni, students, and friends of the university. Benefits include a subscription to alumni publications, discounts at local and national restaurants and businesses, discounts at alumni events, invitation to members-only functions, and more. 453-2408 for more information. Matt Beerman, do we have you this time? We do not have Matt Beerman. All right, Saluki's leading it. 19 to 14, Tolliver will be at the free throw line. There's a look at the Saluki huddle. Tolliver's done a real nice job early on in this game of getting position down low. And he's three for three from the line, looking to cut into this lead. Southern has seven turnovers. That has led to eight points for Creighton so far. We talked about the transition game, and we talked about how many times they sent teams to the line, but Southern still has a five-point lead here. And Jamal Tatum on the bench now with two fouls, likely to sit out the final 7.54. Wesley Clemens is into the game, and Tolliver hits another one. He's already got six. Just a junior, he has improved so much in the last year. Southern can go on here if they can take advantage, but they back it up. Mensu still in the game. Sharp passes is what the Salukis need here. Young. To Falker, good. And that's kind of a, a free basket. Everybody was playing so tight on their man. Didn't, you know, they had Tony trapped, and Randall sneaks underneath. Nensu with it. He picked his foot up, almost traveled with it. That's a three for Motes. No. It's going to be Creighton ball off of Wesley Clemens. And Tolliver just diving for the ball underneath. We're seeing some good physical play. Some of those screens that were set up top, Ryan Mullins just got, got popped on one. But some good physical play as well as down low. Tolliver made the comment that he's tired of losing to Sunday. He's never beaten them. He's 0 for 5. <laughs> Let's keep it that way, right? Porter. That's just too easy. You can't let him get an inside pass three feet away from the basket and put it right up and in. Three-point lead. Mullins. Turnover number eight. Well, he had Matthews on his hip and had him beat. And I don't know what happened there, but Brian had to tip it to himself. Southern now with eight turnovers on the afternoon. The Blue Jays are a three from tying it and sending this crowd just crazy. To Porter. Mathis for three. <laughs> and they, I guess if that's what you call a frenzy, that's what's going on right here in the plus center. And Craig knew they wanted a three. Three guys had a look, they passed it up finally, they get one to go. Timeout Southern. It'll be a 30, we'll keep it here. The Blue Jays have come on, they've tied this game at 18, or 21 rather. Great ball movement, two shot fakes from threes, kick it to your best shooter who drills the three. Well, any one of those guys had a good look at it, but yeah, get in the hands of the best shooter, nothing but net. Creighton has not led in this ball game. No, and their two leaders, Mathis and Tolliver, have combined for 15 of their 21 points, so Southern's done a nice job of stopping the guys who they should stop, but they're not stopping Mathis or Tolliver, and that was Randall Falker with the lay-in over Jimmy Motes to give Southern at the time the three-point lead. And 15,000 fans went up and out of their seat, all coordinated with the three-point basket. This building literally rocks. <laughs> you could feel it, can't you? <laughs> There's a, maybe one of the smallest J fans here today. 
Tony Young has got Mathis beat. There's a foul on Mathis. So Mathis is going to have to come out of the game for the final six minutes. Probably he's got two fouls. And I think Tony was determined. Tony Dana Altman doesn't like that at all. Nope. <laughs> Dana's just staring at Paul Jansen. They're going to leave Mathis in the game. But Tony's the leader out there, and he'll he'll get this team together and see what he can do it's here. The sixth team foul against the Blue Jays. Young for three. Nope. Now Mathis gives a little shove back to Tony. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's the makeup on Matt Shaw. So I didn't see Matt had his had his hands behind his back basically, but they're gonna whistle Matt. And Chris is going. You didn't have to make it up that quickly. <laughs> There's Dr. Wendler, Chancellor of Southern Illinois University, sitting next to Paul Kowalczyk. Very little maroon here inside the Quest Center. But <laughs> very, very little a, maroon. Some pretty important guys over there behind Southern's bench. So the Blue Jays trying to take their first lead of the game. Matthew drills it. He's got nine. Tatum's going to come in. Jamal Tatum's coming in with two fouls. 5.52 to go. Mathis has two fouls, and Dane Altman's going to ride him a while. Blue Jays lead by two. And Mathis has 10. Again, he's their leading scorer with a 14 point average. I get that in the first half. Southern just needs to hang on to the ball. Get across midcourt, get, get set in your offense. Mathis has got to be careful. He doesn't want to get his third foul. Randall gets Day up, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Foul on Jeffrey Day. Just like you're taught down low, you give the shot fake. More often than not, the guy's going to go for it. Got Day in the air, and Randall knew what to do. Shoulders into him. Randall's shooting two. Randall's been better at the line. Hits it. He's got three. So he's trying to tie this game up. Nope. And Shaw gets the rebound. Southern starts it up. Jamal Tatum. Up in the air, no. Rebound to Watts. Blue Jays by a, by a point. Five minutes to go in the first half. It's Nensu. Porter. Nice move, can't get it to fall, and Matt Shaw grabs the board. Real strong board by Matt. Now Southern's gonna push it. They don't have the numbers, but they Tony's got Tony Tony's got a wide open three. Book it. <laughs> Gave him an open look, no problem for Tony. Great job by Brian to push it up. Tony already running the length of the floor to get open. Saluki's retake the lead. It's 25-23 SIU. Mathis working on. Kick it out to wide open Watts. Watts two for three from three point range. Back to a Blue Jay lead. Tatum wide open. No. Gets his own rebound. Gets out of no man's land. And Southern gets another trip. Fouled on Nensu. And Tony Young will go to the free throw line. Southern can tie it up and take the lead, but we won't know until we come back from the break. 3.43 to go. We've got a great one brewing here in Omaha.
Vogler Motor Company is proud to present its sales team. Vogler and her staff have been longtime Saluki supporters, a member of the Saluki Wheels Club, and proud once again to team with WSIU to bring you Saluki basketball. The players, coaches, and staff at Vogler's wish Coach Lowry and his team another fantastic year. Support for the Saluki basketball broadcast provided by Saluki Central, offering a variety of SIU t-shirts, hats, sweats, outerwear, and accessories to Saluki fans of all ages, specializing in custom graphic design, embroidery, laser engraving, tackle twill, and digital printing. Saluki Central has a selection of customizable Greek apparel, accessories, and paddles. Saluki Central, 609 South Illinois Avenue in Carbondale, in the University Mall, or on the web at salukicentral.com. Support for this program provided by SI Dentistry and Dr. Michael B. Clay, DMD. Cosmetic and general dentistry for the entire family. New patients welcome on 14th Street, Murfreesboro, 618-684-6461. Watch the newest addition to our local production lineup, WSIU In Focus. The weekly program will cover public affairs, local history, arts, and issues important to viewers in Southern Illinois. WSIU In Focus, Fridays at 9 p.m. on WSIU Public Television. Coming up on future programs, we'll have a recap of Governor Blagojevich's budget address, an interview with journalist Earl Caldwell, tips on improving your garden, and a talk with Fred Huff about his new book, Saluki Sports History, 100 Years of Facts and Highlights. And when the Salukis leave home WSIU goes with them we want to share every exciting moment but we need your support to make it happen call 1-800-745-9748 Matt Beerman has an injury update for us Matt thanks guys I have an update on injured guard Josh Dotzler the trainer wouldn't really tell me anything they said they'd reveal more about him after the game but he looks like he's gonna be he was at the substation looking to return back into the game We'll throw it back to you guys right now. And indeed, Josh Dotzler is back into the game. Looks like he's fine. There's Chris Lowry on the bench. Tony Young go to the free throw line to shoot one on the bonus. Tony Young, a 90% free throw shooter. 44 out of 49 on the season. Missed it. Southern's had two chances to tie the game at the free throw line, and they trail by a point. Tolliver's all alone if they can get it to him. Jeffrey Day from the corner, no. Air ball. Jamal Foster is into the game for the Salukis. Tony, a pop up three, way short. Falker goes high to get the board. Jamal Foster. Loses it and is fouled by Jeffrey Day, and Jamal will shoot free throws. So did you see what Randall Falker did? He knew that the Craig player was going to try to throw it off his feet or off his knees. So Randall jumps up right between his legs, and they go right into Foster. So Foster now with a chance to give the Salukis the lead. He's shooting two. 73% free throw shooter. Southern cannot get the free throws to go down. They were one for six in the first half at home against Missouri State the other night. They're two for six right now. Jamal Tatum leaves with three minutes to go. Clemens is in. See if Jamal can tie the game up. Southern's got to start making these freebies. Way strong. Two for seven now for the Salukis from the free throw line. That will not get you a win on the road. What a block. Tony Young will come away with it. And Randall Falker got hit in the mouth, slow to return off up the court. <laughs> Wesley was getting here full <laughs> Chris Lowry in that little transition there. Clemens Mullins is from the corner, no. Good look, wouldn't go. Creighton still leads by one. Clemens is holding his hand. Well, we know he got a jam. Foul on somebody. Now Clemens has had it over the bench. Fouls on Jamal Foster, it's his third. Clemens had to have his finger put back into the place in the Missouri State game, and it may have happened again. 
There's the double block. Who do you want to give credit to, Falker <laughs> or Foster? Take your pick. But it got in there because Clemens didn't move his feet. Now I'll see if Wesley checks out. Yeah, Shaw's coming in for Clemens. No, he's not. No, he isn't. They're going to let Wesley play through it, but I don't think he wants to. He's, he's Shaw's in for hand. Falker. Boyle's going to come in. Officials discussing whether or not they're going to let the subs in. Boyle will return to <laughs> the Saluki bench. There's Darren George, the referee, who called the foul. Order hits. So Randall Falker's being Jackson tended to Jackson. over on the Saluki bench. He got popped in the mouth. Not sure what they're working on with or you his see his contact Thompson. lens. And he's working on his contact lens. Clemens has been holding his hand ever since, standing there number 24 on the free throw line. Porter misses the second. Shaw strong to the board. Wesley's got to give the ball up. He is in some pain with that hand. So okay. Southern basically working with four players on offense because Wesley's not going to be much help without a hand. He's got to catch the ball if they pass it to him though. You don't need to shoot but you got to be there. Mullins with it 10 on the shot clock. Southern down two. Shaw nice move by Matt pull up jumper. No good. Matt gets the rebound. Is good. Good job by Shaw to keep going into the paint, and he thought about taking it out, but knew he had that three feet separation between him and, him and his man. Dane Watts, little flop in the lane, no call. Falker is going to check in next opportunity. Jamal Foster playing with three fouls. Four fouls. He may foul out in the first 20 minutes. Well, he had two fouls in 10 minutes of play in the, the game at the arena between these two teams. Porter will try to break the tie again. He'll shoot two. Nope. Walker in for Foster. Lowry trying to do a little job on Steve Morris, but it's not working. It's going in one ear and out the other. Porter hits the second. He's got four. Here comes Tony. Saluki's trailed by one with a minute to go in the half. Mullins, nice curl for the two. He's got four. The dogs lead it by one, and Southern's going to get the final shot of the half as well, depending how long Creighton keeps the ball on this possession. Dotzler. No one to give it to. Timeout, Dana Altman. Good time for the timeout. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Saluki's lead it by one, 29 to 28. It's been everything that we thought it would be. <laughs> we, we knew it would be this, you know, one point close game. Uh, but Southern on that position, they knew they, this is their defensive mentality. Stick with your man, don't let him get an easy pass, an open look. Southern is the fifth best team in scoring defense. There's a nice little running left-hander by the freshman. Yes, freshman, sometimes you forget that. Brian Mullins, the Southern's fifth best in the country at scoring defense. They hold their opponents to about 39%. So far this afternoon, Creighton at 48%. They're seven to 15 field goals great or uh, Southern shooting about 55 percent so far. But what's killing the Salukis is two out of seven or two out of seven from the free throw line. They've missed their last three attempts. Tony Young missed a one and bonus and then Foster missed two shots. Tolliver nice feed to Watts. Can't do anything but let that happen. That sends the Creighton crowd back to their feet. That dunk happened because Wesley Clemens got beat again on defense and they had to give help. Here we go. Final 20 seconds of the half. Listen to this crowd. <laughs> Mullins beats Dotzler. Feed to Falker for the jam. How about
about trading dunks, and that'll silence this crowd real quick. Now stop them. Gonna have to heave one. And Southern has the lead at halftime on the jam by Randall Falker as he blew by Tolliver on the feed from Brian Mullins, who blew by Josh Dotzler. And, and that's similar to what Mullins did in the Missouri State game. I talked to Randall Falker. He said there's a 50% chance when Brian Mullins has that ball that it's going to come to me. No matter where he is on the court, you got to be ready. Have your hands up. Randall had his hands ready for the two-hand slam, which answers the Dane Watts slam on the other end by poor defense from Southern. Which was a great call from the timeout from Dana Altman. They did their top-of-the-key play where they fake guys coming through, and then Tolliver faked and a beautiful feed to Dane Watts for the jam. We are at halftime. The Salukis lead it over the Blue Jays, 31 to 30, Southern halfway to that much needed road victory in the conference. Public television brings back the magic moments from the 1950s. The McGuire Sisters. Comes from your area Anheuser-Busch distributors. Vinagoni Horrell Distributing, LLC. Golden Eagle Distributing. And B&G Vinagoni Distributing. Reminding you that responsibility matters. Support for this program comes from First Cellular of Southern Illinois, by Old National Bank, by the Southern Illinois Collegiate Common Market, Saluki Central, The Furniture King, Vogler Motor Company, Trace Hombres, Banterra Bank, the SIU Alumni Association, 710 Bookstore, and the Saluki Connection, your area Anheuser-Busch distributors, B&G Venegoni Distributing, Golden Eagle Distributing, and Venegoni Harrell Distributing, LLC, and by SI Cosmetic and Family Dentistry. We are at halftime with the Salukis in the lead over the Creighton Blue Jays. Their score, 31-30. We'll be back with more halftime information for you when we come back to Omaha after these messages. Support for this program comes from 710 Bookstore, offering officially licensed Saluki apparel, including jackets, polos, hats, t-shirts, and more. At the game, on the strip, or online at S-E-V-E-N-T-E-N dot -E -E com. Support for this program comes from Banterra Bank. When you come through these doors, you expect to see certain things. The pursuit of excellence, energy and hard work, exciting opportunities and a team working together for a goal. At Banterra, we salute this team. Banterra is a locally owned and operated bank offering both consumer and commercial financial services. Banterra, a proud supporter of WSIU and Saluki Athletics. Where were you when he hit the three? Where were you when the crowd went wild? Where were you when he slammed? Where were you when? Yeah, where were you? This year, the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Tournament is March 2nd through 5th at Savage Center. Support for this program provided by The Furniture King. The 50,000 square foot showroom features home furnishings from Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and more. On Route 13, across from Houlihan's in Carbondale. WSIU brings you all of the exciting action when the Salukis are on the road. Let us know how much you enjoy being a part of the excitement. Call now with your pledge of support for WSIU Public Television, your home for Saluki basketball. Call 1-800-745-9748. Southern Illinois University is looking at a major, major project in the next seven to 10 years called Saluki Way. Chancellor Walter Wendler is featured in this package, talking about Saluki Way, the renovation to the arena, and a new football stadium. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Walter Wendler, Chancellor of Southern Illinois University Carbondale. For over 200,000 alumni worldwide, Southern's campus is more than just a place where they went to school. In many ways, 
It's like a home to them, a place where they made lifelong friends and launched their careers. It will always be special. So there's a lot more than just bricks and mortar, but bricks and mortar, if they're used with imagination and creativity, can do a lot to reflect our traditions and values as an institution. They can even reinforce those traditions and values and strengthen our sense of pride in Southern. That's why we're very excited about work on a new master plan for our central campus that we're calling Saluki Way. I like to think of Saluki Way as a series of bridges. It's a bridge between our past on the one hand and our future that links our beautiful historic campus with a host of new buildings and facilities to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Saluki Way is also a bridge between academics and extracurricular activities and athletics at the very heart of the university experience. And finally, it's a bridge between the campus and the surrounding Southern Illinois community that gives the university a welcoming new front door. This is the proposed uh, uh, football stadium and uh, arena and a, and a modified arena. Uh, this is the Lingo, what the Lingo Hall edition Trout Whitman, uh, which was just recently completed on the end, this semi-circular um, addition to Lingo Hall. This would be a new field house and coaches offices along here. And I think it's very important that everyone remember that this is a project that's planned um, 10 to 12 to 15 years into the future, depending on how funding and the availability of resources works out. I would make one point about the, um, the football stadium. It is configured in such a way that half of it is below, half of the seating, roughly half, is below grade. You'll notice a little change in the color here in this, in this drawing where the cursor is right now. And that shows that the ground level is actually here and then this goes downhill into the stadium so that at the back end of the stadium, behind the seats, there's a relatively uh, low elevation to the top seats. One of the challenges with McAndrew is that it's all above grade, and because of its location, you cannot get far enough away from it to ever have a good perspective. It's always on top of you. And it would be one thing if it was on top of us and it was a thing of beauty, but it's on top of us and it's rusty and it's old and it's, there's spalling concrete and cracked brick and it's just not uh, the kind of facility that demonstrates the pride that all of us, all of our alumni, all of our students, all of our faculty and staff hold for this great institution. Behind the stadium, the arena gets a new look. I think one of the, one of the very strong points of this plan is that it takes the very best part of the arena, the tradition that's there with Saluki basketball, and holds on to it. Other universities have done this and will still play in the arena, but it will be uh, modernized with better seating, better restroom facilities. Uh, there'll be some boxes in there uh, that will help generate revenue streams for us, uh, being some meeting rooms and some classrooms. Uh, so there'll be a, a number of support facilities that would be added to the arena. As part of Saluki Way, our nationally ranked football and basketball programs will finally get the kinds of facilities that match our student athletes' pursuit of excellence in the classroom and on the field or court. And perhaps no one knows the importance of that better than former Saluki standout Harold Bardot, a member of Southern's Intercollegiate Athletics Advisory Committee. Harold, that uh, McAndrew is an old facility. Indeed it is. 1938. It's yes. been around for a long time. Yes. And it's, uh, it's been modified, I guess, one time. But as a, as a student athlete, as a faculty member on the campus, what does the... Uh, uh, the quality of the facilities, the way they present themselves, what does that have to do with the experience? Maybe first as a student athlete and then secondly as a spectator and as part of the larger community here of Southern Illinois. I think we ought to try to put this in perspective. I think the locker rooms in McAndrew were built when they had 20-man football teams and they played both ways. Those locker rooms are tiny. They're locker rooms that wouldn't be fit for most people if they saw them today. You're knowledgeable about, about athletics, and I appreciate that very much. If, you, if, you, if I ask you the question, where do our football facilities fit in the rainbow of facilities in the, um, um, in the Gateway Conference, where would that be? One thing about being around here a long time is that you have a chance to go to a lot of different stadia, 
Ours is absolutely the worst. It is the worst. Uh, it's, it's, and I might add the basketball is not far behind in the Missouri <laughs> Valley as well. And that's a shame. We, uh, and, we have, and of course, we have great teams and great yeah. student athletes. Some of our student athletes are also very gifted academically Indeed and do are. a great job. And that's mm -hmm. really uh, an awfully, well, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but you're part of that tradition. Mm -hmm. You were a student athlete here, and, and, and now you, 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 you're so modest you don't say it, but you, you uh, organize and coordinate the med prep program, mm -hmm. which gives students an opportunity to practice medicine that might not have otherwise they have had, and that's a tremendously powerful thing to do. And it started with you on a basketball court right over there in Davies Gym. It did indeed. And we all have to be students here first. Yeah. Not many of us are going to be pros. When you can count the number of professional athletes on both your hands, you know that students come first here. And I think it's so fitting that Trout Whitman is at the north end of the arena because that signals that's where their life begins. It's an academic center first and then the athletic facilities. You know, I like to hear you say that because, in fact, Trout Whitman is also at the very south end of Saluki Way. In some ways, Trout Whitman is, the, is a hinge pin in this process because it was the first new facility that's located in this general area that we're calling Saluki Way. So it's very important to this process. And it does represent that blend of athletic prowess and academic ability. Uh, you know, it puts those two things together in a very nice way. It does indeed. So in your, in your mind, the, uh, the stadium, uh, as we think about a new stadium and make the plans, and they're complicated plans, it takes a lot of money and a lot of time and energy even to put together the plans. Uh, but in your mind, this is going to be a good investment for the university. Chancellor, it's wonderful. It's just like the new signage here, the entrance way to the campus. One never knows how much people appreciate seeing those signs there. Uh, I've been here, as, as we said, a long time. 1957. But, <laughs> but that is beautiful. I mean, it just signals that this is the interest to a major institution, Southern Illinois University. And imagine what it will be like when Saluki yeah. Way is right behind Indeed. it. Indeed. Yeah. To find out more about the project, visit us online at siuc.edu and click on the Saluki Way button. I'm Walter Wendler, and thanks for watching and for your continued support of Southern. And welcome back. The Blue Jays are back on the floor. The Salukis leading at 31 to 30. Time now to check the Missouri Valley Conference standings. And the log jam at the top that is amazing. Northern Iowa and Creighton 11 and 3. Wichita and the Salukis at 10 and 4. And, and who knows, it may go down to the final game of the season. <laughs> There's still a lot of basketball to be played. And the Southern, again, can temporarily jump up there with 11 wins as some more games will be played out this afternoon. But you steal one here in Omaha, and you kind of make up for that Indiana State loss at home. I agree. Missouri State then is in fifth place at 8-6, and six, and Bradley at 7-7. Seven, seven. Those two teams will jockey to see who gets 5-6. and six. Most likely, Drake would have to come up with a couple of big wins to get in that mix. Then Indiana State, Illinois State, and Evansville are the bottom three teams for the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, which comes your way in less than a month. Can't wait for St. Louis. Well, and remember, those four or five teams match up on that second day of the tournament. And Southern, with Missouri State sitting there at number five, has had trouble with those Bears. So Southern needs to sneak up a little bit higher. Hey, let's take uh, the number one spot in the conference. What do you think of that? <laughs> win out, and the conference championship is the Salukis if they win their last uh, several ball games here uh, here this year. So the Salukis lead at halftime, 31 to 30. Both teams back on the floor. We'll bring you second half play by play when we come back to the Quest Center in Omaha after this. USIUN with the new president of the Southern Illinois University System. In this in-depth interview, Dr. Glenn Pichard shares his unique insights into Southern, where he earned three degrees and later served as a senior administrator and chairman of the Board of Trustees. Join us as the former state senator and member of Congress shares his vision for the future of the SIU system and meeting the challenges of our region, state, and nation. Vogler Motor Company is proud to present its sales team. Vogler and their staff have been longtime Saluki supporters, a member of the Saluki Wheels Club, and proud once again the team of WSIU to bring you Saluki basketball. The players, coaches, and staff at Vogler's, which coach Lowry and his team another fantastic year. Support provided by Tres Hombres Mexican Restaurant and Bar, serving a blend of Mexican and Southwestern flavors to the whole family before or after the game on the square downtown Carbondale. That's Tres Hombres, serving Southern Illinois and Saluki fans for 23 years. Welcome back to the Quest Center. First half stats come your way. There's the points, 31-30. Three-point field goals, not a factor. Three out of seven and three out of the five. There's the big one. 
the free throws, two out of seven. Creighton with 11 out of 15 from the free throw line. The Salukis have committed more turnovers than the Blue Jays in this basketball game. Rebounding the edge goes to uh, the Salukis, I believe, doesn't it? Yeah, 11-7 so far, Southern controlling the glass. Yeah, 16-7. 16 to 7 on the board. Saluki is over the Blue Jays, so that is keeping them in the ball game thus far. And we are uh, just moments away, seconds away from starting the second half. Only one person in foul trouble. That's Jamal Foster with yeah. four. I was just going to talk about Southern's big guys. He's got four. Tony Boyle has been in there sparingly. He's paid, played two minutes. He's got two fouls on the season. He averages one foul every five minutes. But Walker has one, and Randall. Leading his team back out onto the court here, and Randall's been doing some damage so far. Five points for Falker on the afternoon. Southern is led in scoring by Matt Shaw with seven. Overall leader Mathis has 10, and nine points coming the way for Dane Watts, who's hit two uh, three-pointers this afternoon. Saluki start with the ball and the one-point lead as we start the second half. There's down low to Randall. Nice up. Oh, man, he got pushed by Tolliver, and no foul was called. You can't miss a hook, hook shot that badly and no. think that you didn't get pushed. And they go right back to Tolliver. There's the double team. Good recovery by Shaw to get on Watts. Strip and Mullins called for the foul. Mathis so early in the second half go to the free throw line. Brian knew it. He got up in the air and nearly came down, got his hand back down on the ball. But he'll accept that foul. Just his first foul. And Creighton already has shot 15 free throws. They'll get two more. There's 16 right there, and the game's tied. Mathis has 11, had 10 in the first half. We're tied at 31. I'm sorry, Mike. The Blue Jays lead the Valley. They're the best free throw percentage team about 79 percent there's another one there's that nagging press once Southern gets it inbounded they're pretty good back out to Randall Shaw Nice move by Tony Young to go to the hole and draw the foul from Porter. If they're going to keep giving you room, Tony will take it. He had his man on his back, so you just use the baseline and keep sneaking underneath, and they had to go over the top of Tony for the foul. Tony Young had five first-half points, trying to make a free throw. He missed his only attempt in the first half. There it is. He's got six. We're knotted again at 32. A lot of ties, a lot of lead changes in the later stages of the first half. Made them both. So the keys regain the lead. First team to 60 might win this game. It's been the track record mostly for the Salukis this year. There's a push by Tony. Then he runs into Watts, gives him a little bump. <laughs> that was a how do you do kind of bump. First, second foul on Tony. Don't slur. Nice lob. Tolliver, no rebound to Randall Falker. Shaw, no, too strong. Walker had two rebounds in the first half. He's got three now, foul on Matt Shaw. Matt second foul. And started to get a little bit more physical than they were in this first half. They let them play hard, and now teams realize that we only got 20 minutes of basketball to play, and nobody wants to lose this game. Already three team fouls on the Salukis here in the second half. They were in the bonus very early in the first half, Creighton was. Here comes Mathis. Nice move by Porter. 
Porter got around Tatum and T.Y. was there right there to, to stop in front of him but Porter with the good shift to the left. Easy look. Well he's best when he's slashing Porter as he was able to do on that possession. Mullins. Wide open shot for Jamal. Can't get it to fall. Tolliver with the rebound. He's got two this half. He's got five in the game. Creighton with the one point lead. Mathis with a little nudge to Tony Young. That's a heck of a battle. Foul on Tony. Little too much. It's his third. Lemons quickly in for Tony Young. Well, Tony sits down with three. You like when he plays that hard, aggressive defense. Sometimes a little too much called with number three. So Clemens has to step it up. Look for the freshman. He's got to play deep. Porter. Oh, what a block by Randall Falker. Walker with 29, maybe 30. Don't know who they called that block on in the first half, but approaching 30 blocks. They gave it to Jamal Foster. All right. Mullins, no. It's Oliver, really strong to the boards. Moltz for three. No. Porter, no. Rebound to Shaw. Couple quick looks from both teams, and we're going back and forth. Creighton can't expand on that one point lead. Southern looks to get it back. Wide open, Jamal. Yes. Tatum with three. Both teams have had the looks. It's just going to come down to who can hit them, who's got their legs at the end of the game. JT's got them right now. Approaching the media timeout. Oh, what a move by Mathis. Missed it, though. Rebound to Falker. I want to keep pointing out, Wesley's not going to be happy when he watches this if he watches this tape, but Wesley got burned again. Clement. Mullins, no. Comes Doltzler to Mathis. No. Southern's got a four on two if they make it work. Jamal, three. Yes. Tatum with three. Five point lead now for Southern. And Southern's got the transition game going. Quick stops on the other end with Creighton. And converting with the three. Tatum, four out of six shooting the basketball tonight. Timeout, Dana Altman. No bucket. Dana calls a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout. And Southern has started this half very, very well with Tony Young on the bench as he picked up two quick fouls in the first minute and 30 seconds of the second half. And you always look to when you do have foul trouble or a guy's not performing well, that's the guy that's going to do it right now. Tatum has been struggling a little bit this year, but he knows that, okay, my buddy Tony's sitting there over on the bench. I'm the guy that can step up and make these buckets. Matt Painter, former Saluki coach, got a win today at home over number 22 ranked Michigan, 84 to 70. A nice win for Matt Painter and the Purdue Boilermakers. 39-34 the score here. Jamal Tatum now with 11 points in the basketball game. The Saluki's doing a nice job on the boards. And somebody's going to have to keep Mathis under control. He's fortunately he's missing his shots, but he's getting to the free throw line. Nice way to Southern for Southern to open up this half. An eight to three run here in about the first five minutes of play. It was 31 to 30 at halftime. <laughs> Some big points put up on the board. Tatum with six of them. Salukis have uh, two remaining home basketball games. The Bracket Buster game a week from today will be a five o'clock start at the SIU Arena against Louisiana Tech. As of Thursday, last Thursday afternoon, there were less than 1,500 tickets remaining to sell for that game, not including the student tickets. 
So less than 1,500 tickets remain for that game. And then the following weekend, the Saturday against Northern Iowa, 1 o'clock game on ESPN, less than 900 tickets remain to sell for that basketball game. So if you want to see the Salukis this year at home, you got two more opportunities. And I expect Brad Pizza's ticket office to be going crazy Monday afternoon for the Bracken Buster and the Northern Iowa game coming up. And, and if you want to see a specimen, Paul Millsap, the big guy from Louisiana Tech, leads the nation in rebounds. He's done that for, if he holds off, it'll be three straight years and averages 20, oh, almost 21 points per game. That's in the top 20 scoring in the nation. He's an NBA product. If you want to see a guy, we've been talking about Tolliver and, and Falker and these guys. and. Chris Lowry says this guy's NBA quality. And the Saluki women back in action at the arena tomorrow afternoon against Wichita State. 2.05 tip off at the arena. Salukis and the Lady Shockers from Wichita. 15 on the shot clock. Moats to Hibma. Lob it down to Tolliver. Kick it out for Moats for three. Oates knew he had about five seconds on the shot clock. Sometimes when you're under that little bit of pressure when the shot clock's winding down, you know you got to shoot it, just release it and go. So they're doing a good job getting the ball inbounded. Tatum kicks it to Clemens. Hibma trying to stay with Jamal Tatum. Saluki's lead it by two. Foul on Moats or Hibma. Here's Hibma with the foul. And we've come to our first media timeout of the second half. The Salukis led at half by one. They lead now by two, 39-37. We'll be back with more. Support for the Saluki basketball broadcast provided by Saluki Central, offering a variety of SIU t-shirts, hats, sweats, outerwear, and accessories to Saluki fans of all ages, specializing in custom graphic design, embroidery, laser engraving, tackle twill, and digital printing. Saluki Central has a selection of customizable Greek apparel, accessories, and paddles. Saluki Central, 609 South Illinois Avenue in Carbondale, in the University Mall, or on the web at salukicentral.com. Support for this program provided by SI Dentistry and Dr. Michael B. Clay, DMD. Cosmetic and general dentistry for the entire family. New patients welcome on 14th Street, Murfreesboro, 618-684-6461. Support provided by Tres Hombres Mexican Restaurant and Bar, serving a blend of Mexican and Southwestern flavors to the whole family before or after the game on the square downtown Carbondale. That's Tres Hombres, serving Southern Illinois and Saluki fans for 23 years. First Cellular of Southern Illinois, a local company committed to making a difference in the lives of families throughout Southern Illinois and a proud supporter of Coach Lowry and the Salukis. First Cellular, the official wireless provider of Saluki Athletics, say go dogs. Matt Beerman is our man in the stands today. Matthew, where are you? And we are having, we are having microphone problems with our sideline reporter today. So we'll take it back here. The Salukis lead in the rebounding edge 21 to 13. They are out shooting the Blue Jays 56 and a half percent to 50 percent. That was the first half overall in the game. Salukis are at 50 percent and Creighton is at 39 percent. The Blue Jays just one out of seven here in the second half shooting the basketball. It's a Blue Jay team that averages over seven threes per game, seven long balls per game. They hit seven in the loss at SIU, but they put up 24. They were seven to 24. They're four for eight from three-point range here in Omaha. Salukis have Clemens, Shaw, Falker, Mullins, and Jamal Tatum. Tolliver, Motes, Hibma, Dotzler, and Johnny Mathis on the floor for the Blue Jays. Lob it into Matt Shaw. Southern goes on the offense. They got a full shot clock because of the foul against Pierce Hibma. And Hibma cannot guard Brian Mullins. And I say that and he gets the steal. <laughs> How about that? It's Clemens that's going to have to guard Dotzler here. It's only Hibma's third steal of the year. <laughs> and Motes. No. 
Fokker out fights two people for the rebound. Three on two. Clemens to Jamal. Wide look from a three, and he drains it. Is he feeling it or what? But that's a quick release, a quick pass from Mullins, and Tatum goes up and gets it in. Jamal with 14 points now. Five out of seven shooting the basketball. Five out of eight, rather, shooting the basketball tonight. His best performance in a month of Sundays, for sure. Lob to Tolliver. Oh, almost a block by Falker, but it's going to be a foul. And Tolliver will go to the free throw line. If we see this again, Randall grabbed pretty much uh, Tolliver's wrist with both hands. One going to give him a dunk. One gonna, wasn't going to get this crowd back into it. Tolliver gave him a slap on the back after this. Yep. If we let it go, he said, OK, good play, big guy. I respect you. Free throw is good. Tolliver's eighth point of the game. It's back to a four-point edge. Tony Boyle's going to come in to spell. He missed it. Rebound to Wesley Clemens. Boyle, I assume, is going to come in to give Faulkner a spell. Randall draws the foul on Tolliver. Nice move. Mullins and Falker with a two-man game. Foul on Tolliver. Only the first foul on Anthony Tolliver. He has improved so much. Good job by Randall again. You go with the fake, get your guy up in the air. There it is again. Randall will go to the line. He says he's shooting his free throws a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> He, he and Coach sat, He'll sat take there. It. He'll take it. <laughs> a couple weeks ago after he was struggling, Coach said he, he sat with him and shot together. Coach pointed out, keep your elbow in. It's a shot release. Randall's second shot, also good. Randall's got seven. He'll come out. Tony Boyer will come in. And Tony Boyer will guard Jeffrey Day for a while. And I like that matchup better than Tolliver any day of the week. Southern leads by six, 44-38. They've won five in a row over these Blue Jays. They've never lost in this building. They're 2-0 and in the Quest Center. Kick it to Hibma. Porter getting double team. Has to get rid of it. Finally does way out to Hibma. Stolen by Brian Mullins. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Mathis. No good. Wesley Clemens tried to get the board. For Mathis Southern will keep it. Mullins had the court vision. He had Mathis. He knew he was the only one. Clemens was trailing behind the whole play, and you watch Clemens as soon as Mullins went to the left side of the board, Wesley followed immediately to the left. That's why Southern Shaw. has the ball. To Tony Boyle, jumper. Yes, Tony Boyle. He's got two. The dogs lead it by eight. <laughs> About some unexpected points, but you need a freshman guy to step up like that. You're open, that's a shot you hit. Good job, Tony Boyle. Eight point game. The Blue Jays, this is not uncommon territory for the Jays. Porter for three. No lead is safe in this house. Wichita State, as a matter of fact, a couple weeks ago had a 25 to 6 lead in the first half. Shockers came away with a loss here in Omaha. Crowd's getting into it. Five point game. Double team is on. Mullins escapes. Mullins is unbelievable, folks. Tatum. Oh, Shaw can't handle it. Timeout on the floor. Timeout on the floor. 11.42 to go. Saluki still with the lead. 46-41. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Ken Burns. And now for something completely different. Monty Python is back where it belongs on the PBS. Holy Paranoid, wake up! Inquisition. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. And their classic bits. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. On Monty Python's personal best.
Support for this program comes from the Saluki Connection, a partnership between SIU Athletics Department and the 710 Bookstore, offering officially licensed Saluki apparel, including Saluki t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, and more. Located in Illinois Center Mall in Marion. Support for this program provided by The Furniture King. The 50,000 square foot showroom features home furnishings from Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and more. On Route 13, across from Houlihan's in Carbondale. Support for this program comes from the SIU Alumni Association. SIU Alumni Association membership is open to alumni students and friends of the university. Benefits include a subscription to alumni publications, discounts at local and national restaurants and businesses, discounts at alumni events, invitations to members only functions, and much more. Call 453-2408 for more information. And watch the newest addition to our local production lineup, WSIU in Focus. The weekly program will cover public affairs, local history, arts, and issues important to viewers in Southern Illinois. WSIU in Focus Fridays at 9 on WSIU Public Television. Coming up on future programs, we'll have a recap of Governor Bogoyevich's budget address, an interview with journalist Earl Caldwell, tips on improving your garden, and a talk with Fred Huff about his new book, Saluki Sports History, 100 Years of Facts and Highlights. 11.42 left to go in the ball game. It's a five point Saluki lead, 46 to 41. Creighton with a basketball. Randall Falker back in. He'll guard Dane Watts, so he's got to go out and guard the three point line if Dane Watts is in the lineup. Mullins and Dotzler. Tatum on Mathis. Kick it to Dotzler. Jamal with a little push. And that's his third. Mullins may have to start guarding. He is. <laughs> Mullins will now said. guard Johnny Mathis. And Austin Brooks set to come in for Southern. He's at the scorer's bench. Goltzler's not a huge threat to drive and take Jamal places he can't go. But Mathis is. Lob it out to Porter. Three. No, too strong, but he gets the offensive rebound. Out of bounds, Southern ball. And Austin Brooks will come in for Jamal Tatum. Tolliver's coming back in, too, for the Blue Jays. Number 44, Anthony Tolliver in for Dean Watts. 46 to 41. So Tatum and Young both out of this game. Similar to the game at the arena, you bet. Both of them got three fouls over there on the bench. Mullins all the way to the hoop, and he scores. Well, how about your freshman guard knowing that and saying, hey, give me the ball, let me take over. Mathis has two fouls. He doesn't want to get his third either. So smart, petty move by Brian Mullins, the freshman. He's got six points. Saluki's lead by seven. Wesley Clemens back in. Mullins. Tolliver can hit that shot. Nice feed to Porter. Today, and a foul. Wesley Clemens picks up the foul, his first. And Jeff Day now with a chance for a three point play. Here comes Matt Shaw back in for Tony Boyle. Tony did get a bucket while he was in there. Didn't commit a foul, and Jeffrey Day gets the lay-in. That's 17 fouls on Southern, so we're about at the midway point of the second half. Bonus shots coming here throughout for Creighton. Today's a 63 percent, and he hit it. It's back to a four-point lead. There's Matt with it. Wesley's got it now. Southern can set the offense up. Tony Young will come back in next opportunity. Falker with it to Austin. Around the horn to Wesley Clemens. Ten on the shot clock. Shaw for three. Yeah, Matt Shaw. Again, that's just the ball movement. Matt steps out from the paint. And you kind of forget about it a little bit. Matt can shoot those threes. You bet. Matt's got ten. It's back to a seven-point lead. 
Under 10 minutes to go in this basketball game. Saluki is looking for that critical road win. Mathis penetrates Dotzler for three. Way off. Tip good by Porter. Porter getting position in there on Sean. A nice job. If he would have came down with it, there's no way he could have went back up. Good decision just to tip it. Southern trouble getting it in. Here comes Brian. This place is starting to get loud. Five-point game. Shaw with Day. Thirteen on the shot clock. Mullins. No. Foul on Creighton on Porter. Oh, you bet. Wow. And Austin Brooks is the guy that, that's in there, the 5'10 walk-on senior. He got hit on the head, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> Probably an elbow coming down right on the top of his head. But he snuck in there, and as Creighton collapsed to get the bucket, or get the board, Austin. Porter leaves with three fouls. Tatum's coming back in as well. He'll come in for Austin. Also in for the Salukis, number three, Jamal Tatum. Big, huge possession play. Yeah, he's logged over 100 minutes in Valley play in, a, what, about 10 minutes here, but he gives you quality minutes. Five-point game, new shot clock for the Salukis. See, those little things from the little guy. Dotzler has a contact problem now. If you're wondering why the uh, coaches have tennis shoes on, it's the uh, coaches versus cancer weekend. And all the head coaches around the country, staffs that want to, wear tennis shoes in support against the fight of cancer, started by Norm Stewart many, many years ago. So Dotzler has to sit out. Bishop is in. Tatum. Yes, Jamal Tatum knifes his way to the hole. Steal and a steal by Mullins. by Mullins. Oh, and he fouls. Oh. That would have been huge. That's three steals on the afternoon for Brian. In the future. Second foul, we're going to come back and shoot free throws as Mullins. Oh, what a big time steal. <laughs> but then he fouled Jeffrey Day on the arm. Dotzler quickly back in as Dominic Bishop sits down. You know, you, you give up the easy bucket, the quick slasher from Tatum, and sometimes you put your head down and you just want to get that ball inbounds, but Brian Mullins does not give up and caught Creighton sleeping. So Dave with a one and one. Got it. He averages three and a half points a game. He's got four. Second shot is also good. Day comes out, Watts back in. Watts has not scored in the second half. They've held him at nine points. Ryan Mullen sits down, so this is a huge stretch right here. And the crowd knows it, they're up. Mullins nice his way through. Southern is able to set the offense up. Tony Young to the hoop for two. <laughs> Tony says, I've been sitting on this bench too long. Give me the ball. They can't stop Southern driving the basketball to the lane. Seven point lead. Under eight minutes to go. Oh, Tony. Tony's got three fouls. He does need a cheapie out at 35 feet. Comes Mathis. Ten on the shot clock. Down low to Tolliver. Kick it out to Watts for three. Too strong rebound to Tony Young. Southern can get a double digit lead if they make a three. Seven points is their largest lead. And every time they get it, Creighton has answered with a bucket, but not this time. Watts can't get to three. Shaw alone scores. Matt's got 12. Looks like Watts is going down and ankle or something after the ball going in. He's holding his right knee, I think. So they're going to the they're, they're gonna take the media timeout. Here's the play with Shaw. Watts came down on 
Somebody's foot right there. And he's going down. 7.15 to go. We'll be back with more after these messages. And stretch your attention to the video board where Billy Blucci is standing by with today's Creighton University Medical Center. Vogler Motor Company is proud to present its sales team. Vogler and their staff have been longtime Saluki supporters, a member of the Saluki Wheels Club, and proud once again the team of WSIU to bring you Saluki basketball. The players, coaches, and staff at Vogler's, which coach Lowry and his team another fantastic year. Support for this program comes from your area Anheuser-Busch distributors, Vinagoni Horrell Distributing, LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Vinagoni Distributing, reminding you that responsibility matters. Support for this program provided by SI Dentistry and Dr. Michael B. Clay, DMD. Cosmetic and general dentistry for the entire family. New patients welcome on 14th Street, Murfreesboro, 618-684-6461. First Cellular of Southern Illinois, providing digital wireless communications to Southern Illinois and across the country. Services include wireless telephones, aging, and unlimited and nationwide calling plans. Details at 1-800-423-5560 or online at firstcellular.com. First Cellular, the official wireless provider of Saluki Athletics. It is 57-48, SIU in the lead, Dane Watts is sitting down in the chair. He looks to be pretty hurt. He's their three-point threat. That's a huge loss for them. They got to bring in Jimmy Motes, who doesn't play much defense. Right, Watson hit two out of three. He just missed the last one. It could have cut back into that lead. But Southern has a team from three-point range. Suits 33%. They're the eighth in the Valley hanging out down there at 33%. But tonight, or this afternoon, we're in Omaha early. Seven of 12, Southern shooting 58% from long range. And the Salukis are out rebounding the Blue Jays by 11, 27 to 16. In fact, Creighton, Creighton only has 13 field goals in the game. Eight in the first half and five here in the second half. Here we go. Possession time now. Mathis blocked by Falker. Moats for three, short. Tony Young controls. <laughs> Could have been a big turnaround and Randall sneaking from behind. Defense, defense, defense. That's what Southern needs to do. In years past, this kind of a lead would silence this crowd. But now they're trying to will the Blue Jays back into the game. And how about the rest? Mullins is getting on the bench. Tatum, no. Oh, Randall was very close to getting a foul. Transition, transition. Mathis blocked again. A foul called on Jamal. That's his fourth. Do you think Southern doesn't want Mathis to shoot the ball? Three Salukis came down on Mathis on that one. It's his fourth foul, though. There it is again. That's the foul, or the previous time when Falker got the uh, block. Mathis shooting two. Nope. Nothing's going right for the Jays here in the second half, and the Salukis don't mind that at all. It's 57-48. I said first team to 60 has a good chance to win this game. Mullins back in for Jamal Tatum. Mathis hits the second. He's got 13. Nice pass by Mullins. It was tipped, no question. Ball was tipped. Knocked into the backcourt by the Blue Jays. Eight point lead by Southern. Tony Young, knocked away, and Mullen steals it right back. And Chris Lowry says, take your time, take your time. Shaw, 13 on the shot clock. Foul on Matthews. 
got this. Way away from the basket. Southern gets another 35 seconds on the clock. Huge, huge play. Here, Creighton, you play defense that whole time. You don't let Southern even get a good look. You foul him, and Southern can wind some more time off. Timeout, Chris Lowry. Thirty-second timeout as Matt Shaw got double teamed in there, and Johnny Mathis was trying to make a play for Creighton, and he got caught picking his, uh, trying to pick the pocket of Mullins, and got called for the foul. Creighton again, the, uh, they haven't lost at home. 12-0 here in the Quest Center. Third longest winning streak in the nation. Of course, the Lukey fans are familiar with home winning streaks, but 16 in a row here at home. Their longest home winning streak was 28 games. And who snapped that? Southern Illinois University. Two years and one week ago to the day, it was February 4, 2004, Southern came to Creighton and snapped the 28-game home winning streak. Blue Jays come back out. We're getting down to that critical crunch time, the four-minute mark, where it's, can you make your free throws? And who's going to make big plays down the stretch? Southern inbound it. Mathis now with three fouls. Shaw. Fifteen on the shot clock. Young is going to take Dotzler down, down low. Shot no good. Little strong. Mullins with the steal. He's got five this afternoon. And another shot clock for the Salukis. And the Blue Jays are slowly handing the game to the Salukis. The Saluki fans are standing behind the bench. Feed to Shaw by Jeffrey Day and Matt Shaw will go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. Who wants it more? So far it looks like Southern and Creighton has got the turnovers or forced Southern into some bad passes, bad decisions. But the guy right there, number 10, right in the middle of your screen, Brian Mullins. Matt Shaw gets two. He can put the Salukis up by double digits. This is their biggest lead at eight. Bingo. How about Shaw with 13 tonight? Five out of eight from the field. Jamal Tatum, six out of nine from the field. Southern up by nine. Southern up by nine, and Wesley Clemens grabs the rebound. Holy cow, Wesley. Southern has controlled the board. Foul by Dotzler, and Tony Young will shoot free throws. Oh, wow. And those are the rebounds that you're supposed to get if you're the defensive team. But Clemens popped right into his hand. Southern, a 29 to 18 rebounding advantage. See if Tony can put the dogs up by 11 points. Free throw good. Dogs are 7 of 12 from the charity stripe. Tony Young's got 10. They were 2 out of 7 in the first half, so they're perfect here in the second half. Dogs lead by 10. Little short rebound to Porter. 10 point lead, 420 to go in the game. Yep, four on Tony Young. Nice move by Dotzler. Young with four. Tatum with four. Foster with four. Chris, Chris Lowry looks to his bench, but they're going to let Tony play. Four, 16 to go. No, they're going to send Austin Brooks in. Here comes Dominic Bishop. He's got fouls to give, and he's got some fresh legs off the bench. Dotzler will shoot one on the bonus. Nope. He got two. Southern's already in the double bonus. And Dotzler misses the free throw. The Blue Jays not helping themselves today, much to the delight of the small maroon faithful behind the Saluki bench. It's up to these guys on the court to protect this 10-point lead. You got Young and Tatum on the bench. Give them a little bit of rest and bring them back in in about a Second minute. Free throw's good. Dotzler's first point. Inbounded to Brian Mullins. What a play. Safety valve. What a play. <laughs> what a play. Shaw with it. To Randall, way out high. Nine 
point game. Nobody can take Mullen. Shaw. Yes, Matt Shaw. That could have went anyway. Mullins could have went up with the shot, got it over to Brooks. Matt's hot. We're under four minutes. Dogs lead it by 11. Dominic Bishop. Randall, Randall with the foul. We will take a timeout. Three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the ball game. Salukis lead by 11. They're on their way, we hope, to that crucial road win. Support provided by Tres Hombres Mexican Restaurant and Bar, serving a blend of Mexican and Southwestern flavors to the whole family before or after the game on the square downtown Carbondale. That's Tres Hombres, serving Southern Illinois and Saluki fans for 23 years. I'm Maya, and my organization provides shoes for children. I'm John, and I'm a Habitat volunteer. I'm Kim, and I mentor kids. These are people you know, your neighbors, your friends, they're involved in your community. And I am a financial center manager for Old National Bank. And I'm a region president. And I'm an international banker. These are people you know. We are Old National. Old National Bank, member FDIC. Support for this program comes from the SIU Alumni Association. SIU Alumni Association membership is open to alumni students and friends of the university. Benefits include a subscription to alumni publications, discounts at local and national restaurants and businesses, discounts at alumni events, invitations to members only functions, and more. Call 453-2408 for more information. Rumor has it that Matt Beerman is somewhere in the crowd with a working microphone. Matthew. Thanks, Mike. A lot of people know about Tony Young's defense and how good he is, but Brian Mullins is starting to get some national attention himself. This Tuesday's USA Today newspaper showed that Mullins is one of the top freshmen in the country, averaging about three steals a game. He's already gotten three steals a game today, guys. Wouldn't you say he's having a pretty good game? I'd say Brian Mullins is having a heck of a year. And he's, he's been in this building before. I asked him, I said, as a freshman, you know, do you, you go into this uh, Quest Center? He came and watched Southern play last year, hopped on a flight out of the Chicago area, came to Omaha and watched the Salukis play last year. So he knows what it's like to play here. Tolliver will shoot two. They're still keeping Tatum and Young on the bench with 3.30 to go up by 11. I guess it's not quite crunch time yet. Now Tatum's coming back in. And here comes Tony. Tolliver hits. Chris Lowry must be listening to you, Mike. Every time he says something, he's going with it. He's, you said crunch time. Tolliver. Tolliver's got nine points now. What Southern does in the last two minutes of the ball game, we're at 3.30 to go now, but they hold their opponents to about 33% shooting, and Southern pumps theirs up to 45. Trying to get the Jays back to within nine, and he does. Handling the basketball critical right now. Walker with it to Tony Young. He's got everybody beat, and he pulls back very smartly. Mullins with it now. Shaw with it. Tony Young. Ten on the shot clock. Tatum travel. Not sure about that call, neither is Coach Chris Lowry on the Saluki sideline. Turnover, turnover number 12 for the day on, for the Salukis. Nine point lead, 61-52. Three minutes to go. Creighton's got to basically make all their shots. Saluki's got to go to the boards hard. Protect Tolliver up high. Tony Young almost with the steal. Comes Dultzler. Left hand, no, and Falker goes hard to the boards. Double team, fouled by, oh, a traveling call. Tony tried to sneak between the trap, 
And I'll say he moved both feet, but boy, two turnover calls or traveling calls against Southern here. Here comes Moats. Here's their three-point specialist. Shaw's got to keep an eye on Jimmy Moats. Knocked out by Brian Mullins, and a tough place to inbound the ball from now in the corner. There it is. Good recovery by Shaw. There's a bump by Matt. And again, Southern has 10 fouls. So that'll be two free throws automatically for a great Johnny Mathis to the line, shooting two. Mathis has 13 points. Coach Lowry, Mike, uh, in the shoot around before Southern got on the bus to to come to Omaha and catch a flight. Let Mathis' free throw go up. No, short. Had written on the board, NCAA or NIT. It's up to you guys to choose. I think those words are ringing in the ears of the Salukis. Still a nine point game. Salukis will take all 35 seconds of the clock if they can. Shot. Strong. Rebound to Dominic Bishop. Short. Rebound to Shaw, hammered by Bishop, and Shaw will go to the free throw line. Mathis missed them both, and now Shaw can come down and put him back up by 11. That <laughs> looked like Bishop with a, a haymaker in there. It He's really did. To get that ball away from Shaw. That's a pretty, pretty big boy. Bishop was the one that went down for great. Here it is again. Could have called it on Tolliver. Called it on Bishop. Now Matt Shaw has got to make that first one. That all crucial. First free throw. 80% from the line on the year. Shot. Good. You bet. 10 point lead. Shaw. 16 points along with Jamal Tatum. Matt's also got seven rebounds. Shot. Good. 17 points, team high. Who's sitting down? Shaw's gonna sit down. Jimmy Moats is coming in for Porter now. And Southern's gonna apply some full court pressure. Make Craig make use it, as much as the clock. You got it. 11 point lead. Moats is trailing, he wants a three. And Mullins with another steal. Mathis tried to do too much. They're gonna have to foul, you can see it. They're gonna yep. have to start reaching and fouling. It's foul time. Two minute warning coming up. Oh, nice save by the referee. To Tatum. Math is trying to foul him. Oh, a hard foul by Tolliver. But that's okay. There's less than two minutes to go in the game. And Randall's gonna go to the free throw line and shoot two. Both guys up easy is a hard foul, but uh, a foul that you knew was gonna come. <laughs> There's Randall. No intent at all. Nope. Nope. Randall shoots two. Nope. But people are starting to leave the Quest Center. They are starting to file out. Randall can make it a four possession game if he makes the free throw. And he does. Falker's got eight. It's a 12 point lead. Dotzler. To Mathis. Blocked by Mullins. To Tony Young. No good. Follow, no. Rebound to Southern and a foul. Southern to the free throw line to shoot two more. Yeah, we said, who wants it? And Southern wants it right now. Brian Bonds with those quick hands again. And he knew Creighton was going to go for a three. They got to get some quick points on the board, shoot from long range. Brian Mullins with a good defensive play. Wesley can put him up by 13. And he does. There's the block by Mullins. Clemens has six points. Don't throw out of the game. Dominic Bishop in. They need some offense. Chris, Chris Lowry, he's never lost in this building. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen today. He makes them both. 
Clemens has seven. Dogs lead it by 14. They beat him 62 to 58 in Carbondale. Here comes Mathis. Pull up and almost stolen. Up. Tony Young just fouled out of the game. But that's okay. Hey, hey, Tony just always an aggressive player, gives everything he's got. And he still said, I didn't touch him, I'm not happy with that call. Nobody wants to foul, he's still telling coach, but you know what, Tony did, did the smart thing, just walk off the court. He fouls out with 10 points. Mathis at the line, has 15, will try to make it 16. It's a 12 point game with a minute 25 to go. It's gonna be a foul fest down the stretch. Mathis hits it. Southern's got to get it inbound. Sometimes you can release the guy long, home run ball. They were thinking about it. They might know they didn't. Almost had Tatum. Foul on Mathis. We'll shoot two. Brian Mullins will. Four fouls on Mathis now. It's his fifth personal foul. I was down a foul. So if Creighton's going to do it, they're going to do it without their senior, Johnny Mathis. Most valuable player of the Missouri Valley Conference tournament a year ago. And at the line will be Brian Mullins to shoot two once Dana Altman makes up his mind. He's going to go with Nensu. Checking in for the Blue Jays. Number 24, Breeze Nensu. Breeze Nensu. Brian Mullins wants to make the first one. Just a 62% shooter. It's his first free throw of the afternoon. Southern seven of 12 from the line. Neither team going to the line too much. Or actually Creighton was there 23 times. Brian shot good. He's got seven. The lead is back to 12. 67 to 55 and the dogs are a minute 25 from that marquee road win everybody said was missing from the resume. Missed it. Here comes Bishop. Tolliver can hit that three. Moats can hit the three. They're taking time. Kick it out to Moats for three. No. Tip. Bishop drew the foul and he scores. How about that by Dominic Bishop? And at some point, you just have to kind of let the guy go. Falker's still going to play aggressive, not giving up anything easy. And now you give him not only the bucket, another chance, as Bishop says, forget the threes, let's take it inside. Got the roll off the hard foul from Falker. That's his fourth foul, Randall Falker, and Bishop now will try to complete the three-point play. There it is again on the replay. Chow. Oh, man, way off. Shaw gets the rebound. He got hit from behind. And Matt will go shoot two with a minute three to go. So they got within 10, but Bishop could not convert on the three-point play. And Shaw has a chance to put the dogs back up by 12. And it looks like Southern will come out of here with the win, and they have to go to Bradley on Tuesday. A Valentine's Day date in Peoria with the Braves. Shaw, good. Matt's got 18 points. I think the Shaw Funk is over. What a game by Matt Shaw today. Southern's hitting one out of two, one out of two. Oh! Mullins with a steal. How about Brian Mullins? Steals the ball from Bishop. This one is all over, but the final score, folks, as Mullins will now shoot two. Talk a little bit about the remaining schedule. We just hit on it a little bit. Then it's the bracket buster a week from today. Mullins misses it. Louisiana Tech there again. That's going to be a, a great matchup, a national television audience. I asked Coach Lowry, is that a good matchup? Anytime we're on national TV is a good matchup. In Northern Iowa. He made the second. Hanging out there, the last game Southern will play at Evansville on a Tuesday after that bracket buster. Northern Iowa at the arena to wrap up the season. 12 point lead. Hibma, long three, no. Rebound, good by Nensu. Here comes Tatum. Here comes Tatum, 37 seconds left. And they fouled Jamal Tatum. 
10 point game and Jamal can make it 12 again. Yep. Put these free throws in. You can put the foul to put it in the book. Craig will probably stop fouling. 16 game home winning streak down the tubes for the Blue Jays. Southern has stopped their last two streaks. Tatum hits. Jamal's got 17 points. And head coach Chris Lowry is still on the sideline talking to the freshman Wesley Clemens still coaching and letting Wesley know we got about 30 seconds to play. You still have to go out there and play. You can still learn. One out of two again from the line. But fortunately Southern had such a huge lead that it didn't matter. Motes for three. Jimmy Motes. Blue Jays won't go away will they? Here comes Mullins. Here we go. Mullins gives it to Shaw who is fouled. And the Salukis lead by eight with 22.3 seconds left to go in the basketball game. And Matt Shaw will try to get two out of two in this game. Chris Lowry's team will go to 18 and seven with pending a, a phenomenal comeback here from Creighton. Shot is good. 11 and four in Valley play again. They're, they're hanging out up there in the first place. Some other games starting at three, five and seven this afternoon. But 20 wins, usually the magic number that the committee's usually looking for. Do you have 20 wins? And then we start dissecting who'd you beat? Where'd you lose? Shaw's got 20. It's a 10-point game. Fucker from nowhere with the block. 16 seconds left. Dane Altman wants his team to finish the game as strong as they possibly can. Motes for three, yes. Seven point game. 12.7 seconds to go. Hold on to the ball, get it in, grab it. Tatum. Fouled with 10.9 seconds left. He'll shoot two more. Salukis have scored 70 points in this game. 72-65. Jamal Tatum trying to get his 18th and 19th point. Good. 18 for Tatum. Shaw's got 20. Tony Young had double figures with 10. Good. 19 for Jamal Tatum. Here we go, the final 10 seconds of the game. Bishop all the way. He just wants his name in the book. He keeps driving inside to get some points. Get his name in there the There it is. Column. The clock will run down and Southern escapes with a 74 to 67 victory over the Creighton Blue Jays. The Salukis are now tied for first place, if only for a few hours, with Creighton and also with Northern Iowa. Salukis are now 18 and seven overall. 11 and four in the league. Creighton is 17 and six. And now 11 and four in the league, like the Salukis. Matt Beerman. As Saluki head coach. Like Rodney Rod Watson, Watson. Matt's got Rodney Watson. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, coach, thanks for joining us. Today was a huge win. You beat them by 14 points at your place. We're expecting to win by this much here. No, on the road to college basketball. That's a real testament to our team and how they've grown. Another great college basketball game. For those of us who've been around this thing for a while, who would have ever thought we'd be playing in front of 15,000 fans in the Missouri Valley Conference? That's where this league's grown to. And it really shows you where our team's at right now. Uh, what a great after bar, guys. How big was this win for you guys in conference? It is a gigantic win for a whole bunch of reasons, but now it puts us one half, a game back, I guess, behind uh, Northern Iowa, and uh, it's really a great confidence builder. Confidence is so much a part of college basketball in February. It was great to see Matt Shaw really come out tonight. A big part had to do with he stayed out of foul trouble early, and that guy, he was huge, but it goes right down the line. Everybody contributed. What a great win. All right, guys, you heard it. Snookies with a gigantic win tonight. Let's send it back to you. Thank you, Matt. Support for this afternoon's program comes from First Cellular of Southern Illinois by Old National Bank, by the Southern Illinois Collegiate Common Market, Saluki Central, The Furniture King, Vogler Motor Company, Trace Hombres, Banterra Bank, the SIU Alumni Association,
710 Bookstore and the Saluki Connection, your area Anheuser-Busch distributors, B&G Venegoni Distributing, Golden Eagle Distributing, and Venegoni Orel Distributing, LLC, and by SI Cosmetic and Family Dentistry. The Saluki's put three players in double figures, led by Matt Shaw's 20, Tatum with 19, Tony Young with 10. As Rodney Watson said, who would have thunk that a few years ago, 15,500 people would be watching a Missouri Valley Conference game, not at the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Hey, you can put the label mid-major on this conference if you want, but if you want to see some great basketball, it's happening right here in the Valley. Saluki's win at 74 to 67. They are 18 and seven overall, 11 and four in the league. Creighton drops to 17 and six and 11 and four in the league. Thanks to our crew for a wonderful job here this afternoon. For Matt Beerman and Thad Jackson, I'm Mike Trude. The Salukis win it over the Creighton Blue Jays, 74 to 67. The next home game is a week from today, five o'clock against Louisiana Tech in the Bracket Buster game. Repeating the final score, Southern Illinois 74, Creighton 67. So long from Omaha.